Hi all, it's me Anne from Geeks of Green and I welcome you to my little balcony garden. And today we will be doing a little bit of gardening. We will be caring for a few plants that need a little bit of care. So join me and let's have some fun. As you can see, my Boston fern has grown out of its pot and it is spreading into the pots next to it. If you look here, uh, it has spread into this pot where the Dracaena suculosa is growing. And you can see the plant is not doing so well because probably the Boston fern is soaking all the nutrients. Just look at the way it's taken over this pot completely. So I have to save this one. Secondly, it has also gone on to my this plant. My ficus triangularis, they, they, it also is not doing well because all the nutrients are getting soaked up by the Boston fern. This is originally my Boston fern plant, this one. The pot is completely full but all of it is going everywhere. And strangely it's also gone on top here. My Epipremnum amplicium is also not doing well because the Boston fern is growing happily in its pot again. So today we are going to weed out the Boston fern. Sometimes what happens is you have certain invasive plants that grow very happily and they spread from one pot to the other. Some of them have shallow roots and they don't soak up so many nutrients. So I allow those plants to go. But plants like the Boston fern need more nutrients and they completely can choke out your uh, other pots. This also happened with my Monstera, my huge Monstera right here. It sends out aerial roots into all other plants. These aerial roots grow, go and stick into the other plants and it has stifled the growth of many of my plants around uh, it. So what I have essentially done is chopped off all those aerial roots and I'm trying to increase the nutrient intake of my Monstera too. There are other tips and tricks that I will share with you when I do a video on my Monstera. So watch out for that too. So essentially you have to save your plants from invasive plants or plants that are sending out aerial roots and sucking out nutrients from other containers and pots. Otherwise the plants in those container pots are going to die. So the second plant we'll be tackling today is the Pedalanthus curly pink. This has been a very old plant that has been with me from the very beginning now. I don't know how many years. But the thing is it's looking very sad. It's looking very tired. Otherwise if you've seen in the past, I'll put some pictures from Instagram on the screen for you guys to see it used to flourish it used to grow well now the reason that it's become like this is because i've neglected it a bit i haven't pruned it i haven't plucked it it's high time that i pluck it and prune it i propagate the plant and i'm sure it will bounce back it will grow back to its former glory so all we have to do today is we're going to pull it down and just to, and just prune it a bit so the third plant we will be working on is are these uh, passion fruit saplings that i have planted actually I haven't planted them my husband has planted them so we were eating passion fruit one day and he just got some seeds and we decided to put it in a pot he did it and he has been watering it very religiously uh, but the thing is that he has planted it all of all of it in this one single pot and uh, the plants are not far enough from each other the saplings are not far enough so it will take me a little time to kind of thin them put them in a proper pot where I will try to grow them and Let's see what happens in my low light balcony if this plant survives or this if this plant ever fruits. So this is going to be an adventure and I'm really excited about this one. So since my balcony is a low light balcony, I will be separating the saplings and putting some under an artificial light that we have, the best of our light, which has been working wonders for some of my um, uh, light needing plants. So some will go under that, some will go into this spot where there is a little bit of eastern exposure or light, morning sunlight coming in, at least one or two hours of it, especially in the summer months. So it will go here and we will see which one grows better, which one survives. So let's check this out. The first thing we will do is we will uh, just cut off the connection that has happened here, all the roots that are going. I'm just going to cut it off. Not much harm will happen to my Boston fern because it's really established. It's a very strong established plant. So here you go, I've released my Dracaena suculosa. Now let's just simply, gently try and pull out the fern roots like this. Gently just loosen it and pull it out. So 
I'm being very careful that I don't hurt the main plant. Okay. Now since it's going all the way around, I will cut it. I'll cut it to. You can uh, instead of throwing this Boston fern off, you can even plant them, or you can give them to somebody who would like to grow them. I will be personally giving it to someone who likes ferns, so I'll ask people around and see who wants to take in all the Boston fern that I'm collecting. I'm just clearing out any stray roots that are there, just aerating the soil a bit. Afterwards, probably I'll put in some vermi compost, and uh, this that will help this plant grow properly again. Now this next plant I cannot pull out because uh, it's completely caught it over there. So and it's a heavy pot also, and the plant is going outside. So the leaves will all break if I pull it in. It's going through this grill over here. So I'm not pulling it out. Yeah, say I will remove. I will uh, clear it out from here itself. Just to cut now, today. This has grown a little more deeper than the other one. I'll have to kind of. Give it a greater pull, and probably cut places where I cannot get it out. Malum, no. Can you see? The plant has been growing so healthy and well in that pot. One more thing I need to keep in mind is that I'll have to keep maintaining this because it will keep growing back again. This plant is right next to it; it will keep growing back. It has nothing else to do but grow, right? So it's going to keep growing back. I have to keep trimming it, keep cutting it, not letting it become invasive. I found these plants sneaking into many other pots as well. I'm just pulling it all, weeding it all out right now. So now let's do it from the top pot. I'll get it down. So now what has happened here is this has invaded the pot in such a way that this plant is left like an alien in its own pot, and I have to remove it out, and I will be repotting it. This plant is not doing well at all. It was doing very well at one point. I'm just giving it a trim, the rotten parts. I'm just kind of snipping them. I will be putting it back into this pot because this soil is a nice, nutritious mix that I had made, and. We will give it another chance. So let's. This is a whole lot of Boston fern that we cleared. Now I will be planting my passion fruit plant. There are around thirteen to fourteen saplings, so I will divide them. In these two pots, the pots that I've kept right here, this big one and the small one. The big one will go to the eastern exposure, and this will go under the best for grow light. I should not be uh, damaging the roots, so I will empty the plant right here, okay? And I will gently separate it. There you go. You can see the roots are all exposed, right? This way. So. uh these plants have separated very easily because i emptied the pot and it was very easy to separate them that way so now i will just take the saplings and plant them
So essentially what I'm doing is I am uh, giving a few inches gap between the plants. I'm planting four into this pot. I hope they survive. I will water this later right, aside. Now I'll do it in this other pot also. I think I can put one, two and three in this pot. So I'm trying to select the healthier saplings that have a lot of leaves. Now I will be topping it with a little bit of vermicompost, not too much. The plants that were having the Boston fern growing in it, adding a little bit of vermicompost in these as well. So you can see how leggy this one has gotten, uh, so much of stem is exposed. So if I just trim it back up, it will boost the growth again, I'm sure this plant will grow. First we will remove all the dried stems off and clean this plant up. You can see this plant has a lot of sap, it might be a slightly sensitive skin might not be, might get itching and all that, so be careful when you are handling it. As you can see that it's reverting back over here to green. I will be removing that as well. I had last time done the same thing and I had potted all my cuttings of the green uh, non-variegated one which I had reverted back and that's also growing pretty nicely. Whenever you are pruning your plant, avoid pruning them over 25% because uh, it will kind of stress the plant. Now this seems to me as quite okay. There are a few leggy spots but I'm letting them be. Afterwards, I'll do a second pruning when there's more growth on this one. I'll do another pruning. Now I will add a little bit of compost also. Because it's been long since I've added anything for this plant. I think this plant is good to go. It might 
bounce back we'll put updates on instagram keep your eyes peeled on instagram check out for updates My most favorite thing to do is get my hands dirty and garden in my garden. So that keeps me connected to the hobby. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also put in your comments of what helped you and what you liked and if things that you could uh, tips that you could share with me also would be really wonderful. So do share your comments down there and if you haven't subscribed to our channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon for notifications of videos also follow us on Instagram and i will see you soon in another video till then